All right, well, welcome back to the Workplace Safety Show. Um, Jay Smith here with Darren Llewellyn. And um, Darren, we're going to talk about a few things today that some of our clients are, um, I wouldn't necessarily say struggling with, but uh, just some questions that we get into and some things that we see on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, some things that happened uh, recently. You, you were visiting a client, uh, and this has happened too many times. It's uh, pretty frequently, a matter of fact. Uh, a client had an arc flash analysis done in their facility uh, by a different company, and they, they don't, uh, something something in the process they don't trust. They So we're taking a look at it to see uh, what the thing is. What kind of uh, yeah, things did they have? You know, a lot of people are having arc flash analysis done. Uh, you know, this is something that, it, well, we like to say it's relatively new. Uh, there's there's a lot of it being done, and so we're starting to now see not so much, uh, hey, we need to have an arc flash study done. It's hmm, we've had something done, and we're yeah. not sure quite what it was. <laughs> what did we have done? <laughs> and, and, and I'll give you an example here, and, and we're starting to see this more frequently. Is uh, a company came in and and was was hired to do an arc flash hazard analysis, uh, spent some time in the facility took some time off, produced some drawings, printed some labels, and flopped some data down and went out and stuck a few labels on. Obviously, uh, you know, th this, this client in particular has now questioned that. Um, they've been through some training. They've seen some other media on, you know, what, what's really out there and what's really they, they maybe should have done, and they're starting to question, did what we have done, is, is this good, is it bad? The problem in answering that question is, you can't really say, well, it's good, it's bad. Right. It, 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 arc flash analysis is different to different people. It, it means something different to, to different companies doing it and to different companies buying it. And uh, the, the, the main focus of an arc flash hazard assessment has to be from a safety standpoint. Too many times it's looked at as an engineering study. We're going to go in and engineer some stuff. We're going to go look at some stuff. And pure safety is not... not not the not the main focus and it right. has to be and it has to be right. uh, when you just look at it from an engineering standpoint a lot of times companies don't look at all the equipment they think they just need to look at the big stuff or something and, and you, you got to look at all the stuff because it's a hazard assessment OSHA requires we look at all hazards not that we draw some arbitrary line and say we're just gonna look at the big stuff not the little stuff and and that happens a lot um, and, and, you know, not all companies do it the same. Some companies, uh, you know, the good companies, uh, write recommendations on how to lower the, the hazards, mitigate the hazards, and not all companies do that. So um, when you're looking to hire someone to do arc flash assessment, the companies need to really look hard at what they're getting, what is the philosophy behind the company doing it, and, uh, you know, compare that to others. You know, and I think that, that that's a real key there, um, you know, in, in, in trying to answer this question for this in particular, this particular situation is, is what we had sufficient? And it depends on your view of sufficient. And, and you know, obviously, we, we try to tell these folks that, you know, you need to protect your employees. And if you're questioning that, then it's not sufficient. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's, pure, it's purely point. as good simple point. as that. Um, you know, we've talked in the past, and you talk about this a lot, is, is labels, labels, labels. Okay, we need labels. Yes, you need labels. But, um, you know, what I have seen personally is a label stuck on a piece of equipment that says Category 2. Okay, that's good, okay, as long as the employee knows what Category 2 means. My problem, and, and I think where, where some of our clients struggle with this, is what was actually done to determine Category 2? Because right. there's nothing else noted on that label, um, such as a boundary, such as a calculation of, of the calories. That, right. that, you know, and not necessarily saying that all that stuff has to be on every label, but in hearing the volume of these types of instances now, when I don't see that on a label, I question it. Yeah, sometimes uh, people go in and they, they, they just use the tables out of the 70e right. book, which anybody can do that on their own. They don't need to hire a consultant to do that for you. So, And that's where some of those labels that are missing a lot of data come from they've just looked at a they've looked at the, looked it up on a table and, and wrote something down right. so that's uh that's where some of those come i was just thinking about a, a client you had uh, uh, dealt with way out west in a, a big project who had an arc flash assessment done by a company a, a large company and, and they didn't believe it they didn't trust mm -hmm. it so they had the same company come back in 
And when you went and then they didn't trust that either because the earlier labels weren't removed. Right. So the, every panel basically had two labels and they didn't all agree and they came from the same source. Or the, the same, you know, people put the, same, the labels on or at least the same company. And uh, so they were looking at us for yet a third label <laughs> a third la you know and uh, which we did Let's, for them we right. did go and clean it all up and uh, right. remove the other labels and uh, give them a correct one but you know who says we're the, you know who says we're the, the right ones uh, no absolutely and and, th and that's not what this discussion is about today is to say you know who's right who's wrong as more as it as it is you know trying to let you know anyone that may be watching this give them some idea of things to look for and yeah. and, and and an easy thing and, and it's not the label i, I just brought that up as, as one particular point um, you know, more information on a label doesn't always mean better, okay? But one big thing, and it's something that you preach on constantly, is a recommendation. If you get a report, an arc flash study, and you get labels that are clear and concise, and in that report, you get recommendations on how to fix the hazards, I've got to say without seeing it right now that you've probably gotten uh, some pretty good work done. Yeah. Okay? Now there's some things that go beyond that is okay what what areas what levels were we recommending obviously any recommendation to reduce a hazard is good um, but you know we see a lot of times recommendations for hazards starting at category four cal 40 yeah, calories yeah they'll only give you recommendations for category four stuff and, and that that's not correct either you you have to give recommendations for the hazards you know anything uh, you know uh, to, you know you gotta it, this is a, a hazard assessment required you know OSHA requires employer do a hazard assessment and then when you find hazards you're required to mitigate them if you can get them out of the building get them out of the building absolutely and that's why you've got to do this so we've had clients call us and say hey we want the arc flash assessment but we don't want mitigating you know we don't want you to give us the recommendations to mitigate the hazards and we've walked away from huge projects because we, we've never done one of those. We will not do an arc flash assessment without recommendations. It's, it's unethical, you know, because some of these recommendations are so easy. They're Absolutely. so simple to make your panel safer. Right. So the goal of an arc flash has to be to reduce that energy. And if you're not getting that, that's a big red flag. You said about what to look for. Uh, you've got to ask for that. You've got to make sure you get that because some people don't put that in. And boy, they can do it cheap too if they don't. They don't do that. Absolutely, and and some 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 organizations that that do this and uh, I'm sure make good money from it, um, are, are refuse to. We're actually right. doing a project out east right now, and an arc flash study was done, and a pretty thorough arc flash study for that matter. Not to say that you know that, that they didn't do a good job, but it wasn't their business. They, the right. company that did the arc flash study didn't really at the end of the day care if the facility got safer. And here's why we are bidding to do recommendations only. That's it. They didn't get any. Wow. And when the client asked for them, they refused. And that's the focus, you know, uh, that's why whoever you hire needs to have a safety focus, not an engineering focus. Engineering is a tool we'll use to get Absolutely. the arc flash assessment completed, but the goal of it has to be, uh, right. You know, the safety department has to have the umbrella over this thing and, and has to make sure that's what we're asking for. Yeah. You know, yeah. got to make the plant safer, not just better labeled. And, and you know, I mean, you, you listen to us talk here. I mean, we could go on and on all day about how great Llewellyn is, the better, best thing since sliced bread. And that's not really what the what the goal and the intent of these discussions are. It's it's really to give some ammunition. You know, there are some great companies out there who do our flash sure. analysis. We're not the only one. Obviously, we couldn't do everything that's out there. It's just... As a safety company, we see time and time again clients getting taken advantage of because this is something that everyone feels we need to do, we need to do, and you do need to do it. But it's, I think, getting in a rush, going mm -hmm. through the motions. Um, I know, I know, purchasing is can can have a big have a big oh, yeah. big part in this sometimes as to the selection of a vendor. But um, you know, maybe if we give the folks that are pursuing this some of these some of this ammunition as to you know what we really can do to make sure we're getting the right thing, yeah. they they won't have to go out and get it done twice. Yeah. And, 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 I, and that's what I'm trying yeah. to help with here. Man, well, good. And hopefully we can help them with these with these podcasts. All right. Well, I think uh, I think we've covered the topics for today, and uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll see what's out there for next time. Yep. Yeah. See you next time. All right.